Hey, Nature Boy here. All my social media people got together and decided that everybody needs some entertainment now. And so I'm here live uh, to answer any question you have. Um, obviously, I can tell better stories when I'm drinking. If we have fun today, maybe I'll have a couple of drinks later on this week. We can do it again. So it's Nature Boy here live. Let's go. Bring it. Anything. Question. Okay, I'm supposed to keep talking now. I knew it, this guy, so. Greatest living wrestler working today? Uh, uh, well, it'd be either, either my daughter or Randy Orton. Go on. Oh, why? Do you want to know why? Just because Randy's a vast experience. He's a phenomenal performer. Uh, and my daughter on the female side is the best athlete in the women's division, if not the entire company, which is stated by many people, not just myself. So um, there are two people that I'm very close to, obviously, my daughter being my daughter. Charlotte has um, set the bar very high, and I think everybody would agree with that. And uh, if you look at Randy Orton, his body of work over the years, but especially in the last couple months with this uh, stuff with um, Edge, it's really taken Randy, given Randy an opportunity to show just how good he is. When are you coming to Athens? I'm coming to Athens um, when football season starts. Um. To see the Bulldogs. Hopefully, with this great recruiting class, win the SEC and possibly even the national title. How much did your watch cost? This watch right here was a gift. I don't know. Who's the toughest wrestler you have ever faced? Harley Race. What's and your? He, and he would be the toughest wrestler in the business today if he were alive. What's your favorite arena to perform at? Greensboro, North Carolina was. Um, if you take it to a national level, I'd have to say that uh, it'd either be Atlanta or uh, Rosemont in Chicago. How did you meet your wife, Wondrous Wendy? I met her in 1993 at Center Stage. I was sitting with Dusty Rhodes and Sting and some of the guys backstage. And I saw this beautiful woman coming down the steps, Center Stage in a small venue in downtown Atlanta that we used to film WCW at. And, um, she asked someone at the door, I can't remember who it was, I think one of the referees, uh, she had told them that she was there to interview for a job that she'd read about. And um, I think I introduced myself to her. She had no idea who I was, which was really, really shocking. <laughs> and at that point in my career, that was unheard of for a woman not to know who it was. So, um, Anyway, she went and interviewed with Dusty, who was uh, booking the territory at that time. And by the time she was out the door and headed up the stairs, I was in Dusty's office and saying, please, I need a valet. We can change this whole thing up, have a whole new run. And so they hired her. I guess they called her and she, um, they had, let me give the whole background. She had just come from Paris where she got a master's degree at the, Sabon, which is a very famous university in Paris, and was going to do graduate school at Georgia State. And so she postponed that, took the contract, which I think was fairly lucrative uh, at that time, and uh, went to work for us, for the company. How do you like the empty arena tapings to keep the business rolling? I think it, it, it's a difficult task, but I think the guys have done a phenomenal job. My hat's off to them. My hat's off to the WWE. Um, if, you, if you understand the business, those guys um, at NXT and all the kids that have come through there have done that basically for years. So they are somewhat prepared if you've, if you've come from that, uh, from the NXT background to wrestling in front of um um, um, a, a, not a live crowd. 
but just a few people. So um, I think that the, the effort is is there. And uh, last night I thought that Rey Mysterio and uh, Andrade had a hell of a match. It's um, it's it's not a lot to ask of the people because the guys make a lot of money now. But it's a whole different uh, different form of entertainment in terms of them presenting themselves to the camera. And I think the guys have done a phenomenal job. Steve, Taker, AJ, um, and all the guys. Um, John Cena, Bray Wyatt has taken um, his, his, his taking this opportunity and his new gimmick to a whole new level. He's right there at Undertaker status in terms of entertainment value. And if, it, if he's allowed him to uh, carry on with that character, he's great. Cena was great too last Friday night. Mm -hmm. Not that they all weren't. I'm just throwing in key things that I remember. Okay. What is your best drinking story with Andre the Giant? Andre the Giant. 1974, I had just gotten to Charlotte, and Andre was being booked around the country with the National Wrestling Alliance. Um, I had just gotten to Charlotte from Minneapolis. And Andre, we were at the Park Center, it was sold out. And he was staying at a place called the Downtowner. My wife was still in Minneapolis. And for a lot of people that don't understand the relationship, when Andre first started, he started in Montreal, then came to Minneapolis in 72 when I was breaking in. So I knew Andre. And I was one of the few guys that knew him. We went to the Downtowner and that night he drank 106 beers. Frank Bellwad ranked 54, uh, and the reason these numbers are you know, so prevalent in my mind is that the bartender was out of his mind, and that decided that <laughs> he would empty the trash can uh, at the end of the night and count, and there were like, uh, you know, with with the five or six of us there, close to 200 beers, so... Um, um, we're giving Andre credit for like 106 or 108. I've seen him over a five hour period, not, not by any means in an hour, but he can hurt himself in an hour or two. <laughs> I've witnessed that. How did you feel about be, uh, teaming with Evolution in 2003? It was one of the greatest things that ever happened to me because about 2003, um, when I first came back in 2001, I was just basically a shell of myself um, in terms of my uh, self-confidence, in terms of um, you know how I was, how I felt I was perceived in the business after being, you know, completely buried for a number of years at WCW. I didn't like the way we left. Sting and I wrestled that last night. I wasn't given the option. That came right from Vince McMahon. Uh, Shane was there in Panama City. I hadn't wrestled in a long time. Sting had, had just had surgery, but that's what he wanted. That's what he got. And I was a. It was. Um, I got a phone call the next day from Jim Ross saying, "Hey, man, we we're, can't wait to get you up here." And I didn't hear from him for a year. So I was to say the least, down on myself and down on my, I, you, I didn't use that word back then, but my legacy was not anywhere near what it is today or would be would go on to be without the help of the WWE coming in. And then Hunter coming to me with the evolution idea, making me part of it, making me think for the first time proactively about what we could do to make things not only good for me personally, which he took a great amount of interest in, but uh, also something that would contribute to the company, and Evolution did. And it brought two new stars that Dave now is, you know, did a fantastic job when he wrestled. Now he's a movie star, you know, way up there in Hollywood. And uh, Randy Orton, as I just said earlier, um, in my estimation right now, is the number one guy in the business. And I could argue that with anybody at any level. So, what's your favorite moment from the UK? God, that's a tough question. <laughs> what year, and what tour? 
Oh God, I had so much fun. I, um, and I, I just can't pick one. That was one. Uh, I guess it was a, one night we were in Belgium, and it was Taker, myself, um, the Nasty Boys, Piper. I mean, I can't remember who all was on the tour, and uh, Brian Knobs kept asking Piper uh, <laughs> to take him out. Kept calling, kept antagonizing Piper, and uh, and Taker said, uh, "Ah, come on, Roddy, take him out one night." So <laughs> the three of them went out. And the next morning, you know, we were they're very strict. They run on a real strict scheduling system where everything is on a time clock, just like it is now. But it's even stricter now as a result of things like this. But Jack Lanza was an agent, was the head agent on the tour. If the bus leaves the hotel at 12, it leaves. And we've seen a lot of people get left behind over the years. But Knobs didn't make the bus, and uh, everybody was saying it'd be right there. And Jack Landis said, leave the fat bastard. <laughs> we took off. And Jerry Sag said, I don't think he has his wallet or credit card or passport. <laughs> Too bad. When we got to London, Knobs was... In the infirmary in the building, <laughs> and two hours later was in the hospital after a night out with Piper. So, um, uh, phlebitis and everything else. So, the moral of the story is, as as has been so many times over the years, you don't ask Roddy Piper or call him out or challenge him. I used to call him John Wesley Harden, who was a notorious uh, figure in the Old West as the fastest gun. So. Yeah, Piper could wear you out. <laughs> what is your favorite paper? This is kind of fun. Yeah. What is your favorite pay per view? My favorite pay per view. Well, God, there have been so many, but I'd have to say the one where I retired. As sad as I was, I can't, I can't get away from that minute. Two thousand eight. It's not just the pay per view. Obviously, it was the WrestleMania being the pay per view, but twenty four. The whole weekend, the Hall of Fame induction, um, all my kids being there, having Shawn Michaels carry me for 30 minutes, which he did, and then the reaction from the fans, which I never anticipated. When I heard Orlando was going to be my retirement, I thought to myself, gosh, you know, in a perfect world, I would have been Greensboro or somewhere like that, because I didn't know how I was, you know, it would be remembered in Orlando, because I was always engaged against Dusty or Jack Briscoe or one of the other legends from that territory. Um, but it worked out great. I couldn't have been happier. One of the greatest weekends of my life. Um, and. Um, It'd be hard pressed to tell you it was another pay per view that I enjoyed more. I've enjoyed a lot of them, don't misunderstand me, for different reasons, but for the memories and for the moment, it would be WrestleMania 24. What do you think about Edge? Phenomenal. Uh, I thanked him during my retirement speech in, at 24. He had a ladder, he had a match with a ladder that I was lucky enough to be on. Because when Michael Hayes called me, Michael being the agent in charge, he called me and said, you're going to be in a ladder match with Edge in Raleigh. I said, God, you could be kidding me. I don't know anything about ladder matches, something I've never done. Um, and I looked at Edge and I said, hey, you know, I, I can take bumps. I would not feel safe and in any way, shape, or form want to do anything to you, but have at it with me. And... Um, he was great, and I said, I <laughs> I made the mistake of asking him to do something that he'd never done before, and he said, well, I've never climbed on top of a ladder and dived on top of somebody on a table outside the ring. And I said, well, let's do that, and we did. And, uh, you know, even though in the wood, obviously there are wood tables, and even though there's a, a mat on the floor from 12 feet high or whatever he was, you bought him out, and it's the first time in a long time in years that I could feel when we landed, 
he probably weighed about 240 then I could feel where I broke my back and I think I I bit my finger and pinched my arms and everything for about the next 10 minutes trying to make sure everything was working. You know, nothing, it just I hadn't had that experience, that pain. It only lasted for, you know, 10, 15 seconds, but um, that I have a little sensitive area where I had broken my back in an airplane crash and I could feel that. But my hat's off to him. He's a tremendous guy. And plus the fact, I, I looked forward to taking his spear. After taking Bill Goldberg for so many years, I said, you could spear me all night long. Just to remind me which side. I used to look at him during the match and crack him up and say, just to remind me again which side of my body your head's going on. <laughs> he's a great kid, and he's doing a great job now. The stuff with he and Randy is fantastic. Can you woo for me? Woo! Do you miss Macho Man Randy Savage? I do. I like Randy a lot. Um, it's not as much as I miss him as I feel sorry for the fact that he finally found happiness. Uh, I, I hadn't talked to him in a while, but got his feet in the ground, was in the middle of a great relationship, and boom. And that's kind of why. That's one of those things that happened that just made me think, geez, you just got to live every day for for the day because you never know about tomorrow. And uh, Randy had saved all that money and amassed all that money, mm. which he worked so hard for. Mm. And that's what I felt bad about. You know what? You're going to have you're gonna have mm. a really tough time um, finding wrestlers that are sympathetic about other, thing, other people in this business because it's a very insensitive business, as are a lot of businesses. But... This business is a little different because everybody um, everybody scrambles to be at the top. Everybody wants to be the best. And if they say they don't, they're probably not telling you the truth. Uh, it's not about just making the most money. Everybody loves the recognition. Everybody wants to pat on the back. And, uh, you know, I just, Randy had worked so hard that, um, you know, I, I, I've, I'm glad that he finally got his... his uh, the recognition he deserved and when he was inducted. Do you like caviar? No, my wife could eat it all night long. As a matter of fact, she has a world record in the South Tower of the Wynn Hotel. $4,000 worth of caviar in one night. Who one, is the... Wondrous Wendy. Who is the future of pro wrestling? Oh, gosh. There's a, just a handful of guys that are just... I, I can't just pick out one guy. There are, there are four or five guys on both rosters that are really good and four or five girls. I, I'm not going to... There are four or five. I miss refer to them as people rather than as to go between, between the two. Uh, they're, they're just... You can tell the ones that just are there every day wanting to make a statement. You know, Jack Mulligan told me so many years ago, when you walk out and you get in that ring, you're going to have between four and six minutes. This was in 1978. To make a difference, to catch someone's eye, whether it be Vince, Hunter, Stephanie, Michael Hayes, you know, John Johnny Ace, whoever is there, someone that can carry the message, someone that can take the word, and say, hey, God, did you see that? And, uh, you know, we have, we have a, you know, 10 or 12 people right now that are, that are right there, really, you know, that are, that are performing at that level, and they're catching people's eyes. So I don't want to single them out, but uh, they're rich in talent, and it's just finding their niche. And some of them have already found their niche. Will you be at WrestleMania next year in Los Angeles? Most assuredly. How is your health? Fantastic. I probably am healthier now than I have been in 10 years. Do you remember your first woo? 1974. Woo! Did you accomplish your dream? Yes, I have now. Who was your best drinking partner back in the day? Arn Anderson. 
Who do you wish to break your record 16-time championship? Wow. Well, I'm so high in him right now. I, I, I think Orton would be fantastic. Actually, I want Orton to retire soon so that I can get my third ring, which is virtually guaranteed. <laughs> but I think that he is so good right now and he's worked out a deal with them where he doesn't have to work 300 days a year um, to mine out. That's what I've been told. I don't know for sure. So his schedule is um, a little more flexible because he's settled in with a beautiful family, a beautiful wife, and he's really happy. Happiest I've ever seen him. So if you can make a lot of money and be happy at home, why not stay at it? Why not stay after it? How can you be from Minnesota and not know how to ice skate? I actually, I'm an e excellent skater. And what you saw in Vail is not even close to being real. I had been sitting in the bar. And even though I'm not supposed to drink, I did have a couple of drinks that day because I had just scaled a 10,000 foot mountain, which people told me I couldn't do. So I went down to the barn and I got, I got challenged to ice skate. And you know that an athlete like you just can't find a pair of skates on a rack. My stuff is custom made. The blades were dull. It was just, it just it was one of those deals. Again, next time I skate, and you know, won't be able to tell difference between me and Bobby Orr. <laughs> Not Scott Hamilton, Bobby Orr. Yeah, I just got him up in the skates. So give me a break. <laughs> Who? What is one re wrestler that you wish you could have faced? Roman Reigns. Do you think Charlotte can beat Rhea at Mania? Yes. I, I expect him to have a phenomenal match. I think Rhea is spot on. And she's confident. Um... And, I mean, and that confidence will will play out in her ability to give Charlotte a great match. What's your WrestleMania dream match for Charlotte? Oh my gosh, that's a tough one. My dream match, I think, for a long, long time, was to see her do something with Stephanie because she holds uh, Stephanie in such high esteem, as do we all. Um, but her dream match, I think, um, in talking to her, I think that every time she that she goes to a pay-per-view, especially Mania, she sees that as being the, the the next big thing in her life. And I'm, I think right now she thinks of her match with Ray as being an opportunity to steal the show, and they very well could. Favorite feud of all time. Uh, Dusty Rhodes or um, either him or Steamboat. Dusty Rhodes, longer. I'd have to go with Dusty. It's a 25-year deal. Who would win, Sting versus Taker? Um, Why, well, it's tough. Got to love Sting, but I'd have to go with the Taker. I don't... Um, AJ is phenomenal, but, you know, climbing... Taking on Taker puts you in a whole different... He just got that. I know Sean was Mr. WrestleMania, but Taker is the Undertaker, and you know, he'll be... He won't be ever... I don't want to ever be a character that has accomplished... that has accomplished what he has. Did you feel the pain when performing the leg lock? Did I feel the pain? I felt the pain when it was put on me. Can you tell us a funny memory with Randy Macho Man Savage? Oh, yeah. Um, well, I don't know what's funny, but it's... it's um, yeah, I, I'd rather not... Yeah, I know, I'll just tell you, we were in Anchorage, Alaska when he and Liz broke up. And in Anchorage, Alaska, sometimes of the year, the sun never, never goes down, it never gets dark. 
and he was really down and depressed. And I said, look at Randy. I'm not a strip club guy, but they got a hell of a strip club here in town. And I'm just going to take you there for the next four hours. <laughs> and I can't remember who all joined us, and they don't need to be mentioned anyway, but Randy and I were there for about 21 hours. I got him so damn many lap dances, I exhausted the girls. <laughs> Do you have a PlayStation 4? No, I don't. And if I did, I couldn't operate it. Yeah, my stepson is a technical wizard, but I, I, I haven't played any games with him on it, no. How do you like AEW? I think they're doing a good job. Can we be friends? Can you and I be friends? Whoever I'm talking to, it depends. You'll have to talk to my social media people. <laughs> I don't understand how that befriending you works. <laughs> what do you think about rap song Migos? Oh, I think they're awesome. I, they just, they treat me with so much respect, it's scary. And I've become, I think, more than just friends with Offset and Quavo. I see, I actually, I see them, see Quavo all the time, not only at, through music, but at Georgia football, he's down with the Falcons, and uh, I see him a lot, and um, he, he and Offset are tremendous guys. Take Off is a great guy, too, but I don't hang around him as much. Did you like that you were in a Super Bowl commercial? Yes. I enjoyed it very much. Drink of choice? Drink of choice. Um, cold Miller Light, Kettle One, Soda, Splash of Cranberry, Lime. That was what I was drinking, which I haven't drank in you know it's two years prior to my skating episode. <coughs> Had it just been on the Miller Light, you would never know. I would have never had any problems. Favorite horseman moment? Wow. Favorite horseman moment? Every night was my favorite horseman moment. <laughs> Four guys that, you know, I had great relationship with, had so much fun in the ring with. I don't think, I can't think of three, maybe about, what, about three or four times that we didn't just like getting in the ring and working. It was always sold out. It was Dusty and Nikita and Sting and the Road Warriors, Magnum TA. I mean, so many guys, a revolving door and different combinations. And from there to the bar, you know, and who knows, a lot of fun. Do you like Sasha Banks? Yes. Sasha Banks, I call Ricky Steamboat. Um, she and uh, Charlotte Ashley have got that kind of chemistry that Steamboat and I uh, had. They could go, you know, for two years without wrestling each other and get in without talking, without even just looking at each other and, and have a phenomenal tear the joint down kind of match. Yeah, I, I call Sasha Ricky Steamboat all the time which is a, a hell of a compliment. Are you still in touch with Arn, Tolly, and Ole? I see those guys at signings, but we've all gone different directions. So um, uh, I see them at signings, but I, probably maybe three times a year. When can we see you back in the wrestling ring? I don't think you'll ever see me back in the wrestling ring unless they give me the mic and want me to make some kind of a spectacular appearance and entertain the crowd as only I can for five minutes. What's your favorite? Actually, they might give me the mic in an empty building. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't call out anybody in the crowd. <laughs> I, I never thought of that. So anyway, I, I, that would be the only time. What's your favorite championship belt design? Oh, my favorite is the old NWA. Or the one, that, the big gold, they call it the big gold. That crack it had made in 87. That was a beautiful belt, too. 
How underrated is Barry Windham? Very. Barry Windham would be one of the top 20 guys in the history of the business as an as a, as a individual. What was it like working with a young Brock Lesnar? Um, well, first of all, he's a world-class athlete, and I knew that going in. But to, um, <laughs> to tell you that I wasn't nervous, I'd be telling you a lie. But he was great. He, um, he took care of me, and um, you, I, I couldn't tell myself that going in because I hadn't wrestled in a while. And, uh, but it was in Atlanta, obviously, where we live right here. And, um, uh, we actually had a good match and, uh, it worked out great. But he's a, he's one, he's one of these generational athletes that comes along. I mean, Jesus, you know, from high school football to almost making the Vikings. From pro wrestling to MMA, I mean, amateur wrestling. And his athletic ability... He's as good as he wants to be on a given day, but he's a great athlete. And he and he was very careful with me. What was the funniest thing you ever saw as a wrestler? Oh, man, the funniest thing. God, that'd be hard to name one thing. Um, can I think about that for a minute? Yeah. Okay. What city... That did you wrestle in that had the best food? Baltimore, Little Italy, Chicago, Gibson's, Tide. How happy were you when WCW closed up? Happy enough that I took Ted DiBiase over to the bar next door to Club the Villa in Panama City, and we stayed there till 5 a.m. Drinks on me. The who, happiest day of my life. <laughs> who came I up? I mean, in the wrestling business. Who came up with the idea of you coming out to the ring to 2001 Space Odyssey and WCW and then WWE? You know, I want to say it was Dusty's idea. I'm pretty sure it started in NWA, actually. What's your opinion on Jeff Hardy? Fantastic. I think Jeff is a phenomenal performer. Uh, he has put his body through hell and somehow is still able to walk. We're personally very close. And I've got nothing but respect for him. And uh, he went out there you know, Friday night with Corbin and he didn't miss a beat. He and Corbin had a hell of a match How on, on SmackDown Friday night. How was it meeting Jungle Boy, Luke Perry's son? Oh, I met him on the cruise. What a great, what a great kid. Yes, very nice. Who was your favorite wrestler to mentor? Who was my favorite to mentor? Well, I don't know that I've mentored anybody. I know that I've had a lot of influence, or my character, Ric Flair did. Mentoring, um, if I mentored anybody, it would probably would have been Steamboat. Because I, it, he came in the business at a time when a handsome, well-built young guy was going to have a real difficult time knocking down the door because it was so guarded and anybody that was over 40 years old was not going to see a 25-year-old kid come in the door and be successful. So I had to really push George Scott into using Ricky, but it it worked out phenomenal. He was in Atlanta, and Jim Barnett, the promoter there, called Jimmy Crockett and said, I want one-man gang, and I'll give you Richard Blood. And I had just been at Atlanta TV, so Crockett, Jimmy called me and said, what's this Blood kid like? And I said, God, he's phenomenal. He's one of Vergania's guys. And... Uh, Bingo, Ricky was there, and we went we went at it right away. Anything you regret while wrestling? Uh, not, not so much wrestling as, um, you know, I regret, you know, some of the ways I, in, in some of the ways I conducted myself 
you know, that that would be conduct because she's not wrestling. What do you think about The Rock as a wrestler? I think The Rock is great. He's just, um, you know, given our business. Um, he, he was he was great in the ring, great promo, but um, the off screen, not wrestling. Rock is, I think, brought a ton of recognition to our business, which he is nice to give back. What wrestling shows do you watch? I watch um, SmackDown, NXT, and. Uh, and Raw. Who makes better movies, Rock or Cena? Wow, I got to go with The Rock on that. And that's not being harsh to John. Uh, Dwayne's one of these guys that is just, you know, he's, I think, he, if I'm not mistaken, he's the highest paid actor in Hollywood. I mean, you got guys like Mark Wahlberg producing your shows. You, you're standing in pretty, pretty, pretty high water. Or standing on pretty tall ground, rather. What's your favorite Steve Austin story? Oh, God. My favorite Steve Austin story is just happened at the Raw reunion. Um, you know, Steve is... At least, as, um, forget the fact that Steve is the biggest star in the history of our business, which he is, in my estimation. I said it at my Hall of Fame speech. Steve just loves wrestling. And one of the reasons he likes me is I can tell stories, f you know, from four different decades. And so at the reunion, you know, which I looked forward to, and Wendy likes seeing the guys, and we went and checked in the hotel, and I, Wendy had texted him, we kind of bombard him, we're coming. So he came down and we, um, you know, and <laughs> he felt bad. Because once again, I'm not supposed to drink. You know, I don't know. We're not exactly sure why, but so I don't very often. But like when I've been with him, I can. I kind of I. I, I assume a new identity, <laughs> close to the one I used to have, and I drank about ten beers with him, and then I had a couple of drinks, and I just told stories, and we called Herschel Walker, and we called Lawrence Taylor, and. He loves stories about the business because he he's like, he I mean he's in a story. And when you do it, when you do Steve's podcast, he has done research to come up with stuff that makes you think about your career and where you've been and who you've wrestled. It's fun. I'm going to be on his podcast uh, in April. What did you do for your birthday? This year, for my birthday, I ooh, I went to the Laker game. Yeah, I got to introduce uh, the Lakers and say a few words about LeBron. Are you a Minnesota fan? No. What about HBK? Oh, yes. And I've apologized to him personally, and I've said uh, my, t my temporary insanity outburst <laughs> because of my 30. I got mad at everybody that said something bad about me, so I got over it, though. Has anyone ever challenged you to stair climber and won? When I was in shape? No. Not even close. Um, is it true you got to wrestle against the original, original Nature Boy? But yes, I did twice. I just watched one of them the other day on the uh, network. Yep, I wrestled Budro twice. Once on TV in Raleigh and once in Norfolk, Virginia. Favorite Japanese wrestler from back in the day? From back in the day, my favorite would be Tenru. Um, if back in the day is the great Muda, it would be Muda. Or actually, you know, I liked... Um, I had some pretty good matches with... Um, not Choshu, but um, let, let me think of his last name. It'll come to me. Do you think this will be John Cena and Undertaker's last match at WrestleMania? 
I don't know. Those are decisions that they can only make it themselves personally. My, my decision was made for me by somebody else. <laughs> um, it's, um, you know, the day the taker doesn't come out, it's, it's a huge loss for all of us as fans. Not just the people I'm talking to now, but for me, the day that John quits coming out, you know, and because every time they come out and they they bring a whole bunch of memories and great great things, I mean, things that crossed my mind, you know, with myself, with John personally, and the fun I had with him, and remember when he first won his first title, and you know, miss him a plane and in England on the way home because I was trying to get John drunk. I got myself so hammered I missed my plane going home. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I a story with me and John Cena. Um, <clears throat> but, and and Taker, oh my God, where do I start? I've lost two Rolex watches with him, almost a third. Um, just great memories for myself personally, but I mean, I obviously speak for millions of fans that have watched, not on a personal level, but for the millions of fans that have just adored those guys for years. So yes, it'll be a big loss and I will miss them. What is the most steps you've accomplished in a one hour session on the stair climber? You know, here, here's, I had to think about this for a second because I was gonna go back to your question originally. No one could ever beat me on that up until um, 2009 when I started to slack off. Then I got on it really hard again for two years. But going into WrestleMania um, with uh, with um, Sean, I got myself cardio-wise, even though I was a cosmetic nightmare, which I've always dealt with that. Cosmetic issues were things I could talk my way around. <laughs> <laughs> but conditioning wise I do I do what's called a deck of cards and I've done it with people like Terry Taylor uh, I've done it with Tom Pritchard anybody I can talk into it I think I talked Sean into it a couple times where you take a deck of cards and you add the jokers which you make 20 and then you put them on a table you flip them over and say it to 10 you do 10 free squats 10 push ups and 10 crunches. Joker, 20, 20, 20. I think it adds up to like 460 of each. And I've done that in 38 minutes. How but many? in terms of a stepper, I, I can't keep track of that. I've done, uh, I do um, 500 free squats. Um, I've done it in 18 minutes, as fast as ever. How many robes do you currently have in your possession? I have um, seven. Um, what's your experience wrestling in Puerto Rico? Some of the greatest times and most fun I've ever had in my life. Working for Victor and Carlos was fantastic. I wasn't there uh, for the issue with Brody, which was very sad. And I only went back with the WWE 20 years later, but um, prior to the tragedy with uh, um, Jose and uh, and Bruiser, uh, it was a great place to go. I go down there and wrestle in San Juan, different cities in Puerto Rico. Then I'd go to St. Croix, St. Thomas, St. Martin. We'd do a whole 10 day tour of the islands. What do you think of Cardi B? Very nice person. I don't know her any more than to say hi and, and it, uh, not to mention other women in front of her. <laughs> if you could pick any movie star to work with, who would it be? Oh, God. If I could make any movie star to be in a movie with? To work with? It can be whatever. Wow. Um, let me think about that too. I'm really not up to speed on that. Bradley Cooper. Bradley Cooper. <laughs> oh God, 
Bradley Cooper. <laughs> my, my, my wife is hollering from the background here. Woo! Bradley Cooper. Okay, honey, calm down. <laughs> he was, he, he's got a place by yours. <laughs> Thoughts on Post Malone? A great guy. God, he came to see me when I was just out of the hospital. And he came to see me again about six months later. And I'm so happy for his success. He and Swaley are going to do a video with me in the next couple of months. And hopefully when everybody, you know, hopefully everybody survives this health issue we have. But everything gets back up and running. So, But he's a great guy. And his music is great, and he's a great, a great person. Do you still hang out with Little Nate, Charles Robert Robertson? I do, whenever I get a chance. Could Hulk Hogan still wrestle, in your opinion? You know, um, I saw Hulk, uh, who I talked to once a week, um, at um, Rocky Johnson's funeral, and he is standing taller and looks the best I've seen him in a long time. And, uh, you know, only his doctor can tell him that, but he looks 100% better. He's virtually pain-free. And, I mean, the guy that I flew to Saudi with prior to that surgery was, I mean, he was in tremendous amount of uh, discomfort, hurting bad, couldn't stand up straight, and now... Uh, it, it, it's hard to say I couldn't do anything he wants to do because this surgery worked and it's uh, it's just a matter of time. Um, and he'll have to make a decision, you know, as to whether or not he thinks he can have the kind of match he wants to have. That that's kind of where we're at. But he he looks great, and uh, I'm I'm happy that 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 surgery finally worked for him. Are you a Chris Rock fan? Yes. Just watching all of them this morning. <laughs> He's hilarious. Do you like kamikazes? I do. What are your thoughts about Lance Storm? I like Lance very much. I understand, and I think I saw that he's working for the company now backstage, but I like Lance a lot. Any great stories from Vancouver, Canada? No. I lost a mink coat there. <laughs> Just another story. <clears throat> How yeah. was it when you fought The Undertaker at WrestleMania? <clears throat> well, it was one of the biggest moments and highlights of my life because that was that time frame when I was really struggling, WrestleMania 18. And when Hunter told me that Taker wanted to work with me, I was in shock. Not that I, you know, not that he and I weren't friends and all that, but to think that he wanted to work with me, it put me on the map. Does that make sense? There are some landmarks along the way that put me on the map. Like when I started Wallow McDaniels, Blackjack Mulligan, later on, Jack Briscoe, Terry Funk, Harley Race. Later on, Dusty Rhodes. Um, I gotta throw Dusty in there. Um, then along comes this whole new deal. Hunter, Sean, Taker. These are things that, you know, names that were vital to me. George Scott, a, a booker. Jimmy Crockett, of course, I mean, um, I'm leaving some people out, but Wahoo, Dusty, Race, Funk, the Br Jack Briscoe, Jack, and Jerry, but I wrestled Jack a lot. Um, Pat O'Connor in St. Louis. I mean, the, but um, Taker and Taker and uh, Sean and and Hunter being on that last leg of my career huge part of it. Without me, without, I even told Taker, without Taker, there is no Ric Flair. There is no ending that's happy that I would have been happy with. What's your favorite state? My favorite state? Well, it's where I live right now, Georgia. 
What's your favorite promo? Um, my favorite promo. Hard to say. I'd have to go. Um, I look at some of the things I said back in the days, and I actually been, I can entertain myself now. So it's hard to pick out one. The one with me and Gene, where I disrobed in Baltimore. When Bobby Heenan looked at me, and coming from Bobby Heenan, I went, really? He said, that's the greatest thing I've ever seen you do, and I've seen you do everything. So I, I, I like that one. But you have to remember, and then the people understand, you know, for the, I'm playing off Roddy Piper, and I'm playing off Dusty Rhodes, and Hulk, and some of these guys were just phenomenal talkers. It was just a question of, trying to get out there first or trying to get out there last. You either set the tone or you wanted to end it or you had to compete against all of it. They put Piper and I in the ring one night in, in Roanoke, Virginia, and it was so good. And we weren't even featured. <laughs> but I just started talking about him and you know living by Phil Nike. And, and it was so damn good and the crowd got into it and everybody else backstage is bad. But that's... You get used to that. Was Bruce... It's good to be good. It's it's really good when people are talking about you. Was Bruiser Brody tough? Very tough, but a great worker. Guys would not like to work with Bruiser today. Um, number one, he was in phenomenal condition. He had to work in Japan. So, and the key to being successful in Japan, if you were American or if you weren't Japanese, rather, was to be in the same kind of condition they were. And it, to this day, those young kids, they free squats, push-ups, fanatics on condition. And uh, he stayed in great shape. I could, I could wrestle him for an hour. I could wrestle him for 20 minutes. He never got tired, 6'6", 320 pounds. But he was in there. By that, I mean there was... <laughs> <laughs> I've been hit with what we'd call a wrestling punch from him harder than anybody's ever hit me for real. <laughs> Including my ex-wife. <laughs> Can anyone give the chop as good as you? Nobody close. Do you think that Vince should step down? Hell no. What do you prefer, SmackDown, NXT, or Raw? Well, I like SmackDown and Raw the same, but obviously if I had to pick one, I'd pick Raw because Charlotte's on it. But getting back to Vince McMahon, absolutely not. He needs to run that company until he absolutely just is failing at health so badly that he can't. Because that's, if you look at what he's contributed to the business and what he has done for all of us, all of us, it's, it, you can't put it in words. I want to live long enough when they induct him to the Hall of Fame. Um, Is that it? Hold on. Uh-oh. I'm being able to put a hold of social media. Have you been to India? <laughs> India. <laughs> Yes, and I don't want to go back. <laughs> what are your thoughts on Goldberg being new Universal Champion? Um, I'm happy for Bill. Let me tell you, Bill has worked hard. He never had the opportunity to learn the business from the ground up, but he's worked hard. And I'm anytime I can see anybody that has been respectful and a good guy um, in my eyes, and I'm happy for him. So um, good for him, and I, I think that uh, it's going to be very interesting to see Bill and uh, Roman go at it. Do you watch soccer? It's basically Georgia versus Georgia Tech. Do you watch soccer? Uh, I watch Atlanta United. How many Rolexes do you have? Three. 
Are you the Flash? Not anymore. (laughs) (laughs) Ixnade from the game plan. Who do you think will be the next guy to carry the torch? The next guy to carry the torch. Hmm. I don't think one guy can carry the torch anymore. I think it'll be shared by multiple people. Where is Tom Brady going? Uh, I hope to the Dallas Cowboys. (laughs) I love that. And nobody's predicting it. Who inspired you to start wrestling? Um... Nobody inspired me. The opportunity came about. I was working at a bar. I had flunked out of college. And I met Ken Patera, who at that time was training for the 72 Olympic Games. And that opened the door to Vern Gagne, who I'd met, and his son, who I was already friends with. As an older athlete, how did you deal with arthritis? Um, It's a good question, and we're going to wrap it up on this. I don't have any arthritis. I have friends that are older, actually younger than me that do, and it's by the grace of God, I don't. I feel like a million dollars. And if you guys had fun today, because nature, one more. How did you get so much swag? Um, You know, that's a good point. Since LeBron uh, gave me the tag as being the founder of swag, and Snoop Dogg has jumped on that as well. And Offset has. I guess I was just born with swag. Because the minute I had enough of this to buy the swag and apply the swag to how I actually felt, I was rolling. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Calm down, woman. <laughs> okay. That's it. It's a wrap. If you're ready. If you guys love this, next time we'll do it. And I'll get a 12-pack of Miller Lite. Nature Boy, out. Woo!